from abandoned islands to obscure hidden places. These are 10 unusual abandoned places in Canada. Number 10, Coal Island. Location, British Columbia. We start off our journey with this little known gem. Coal Island was once used by the Royal Navy and the Royal Canadian Navy. It stored ammunition and explosives that were too dangerous to keep at the nearby docks. At some point, the island had 16 buildings, and when looking at it from the air, it makes you wonder how they fit them all in such a small area. The island outlived its usefulness by the 1900s and became a great spot for vandals and looters. Some went as far as stealing the bricks for their own building projects. But not all is lost. Recently, 180,000 Canadian dollars were spared for the island's makeover. Number 9. Bankhead. Location, Alberta. There are many mining ghost towns all across Canada, but not many are also located in the national park. Bankhead was a town created to support the anthracite coal mine located in Banff National Park. The town supported around 1,000 people for almost 20 years. The mine was shut down unexpectedly in 1922. It was owned and operated by the Canadian Pacific Railway, and they deemed it not profitable. Nowadays, there's not much left. The company actually lifted and moved most buildings, except for one. They also left a few locomotives laying around the area. Even though it doesn't have the ghost town feel of many places in Nevada and California, there is an interpretive trail documenting where things used to be. Number 8. The Guild Inn. Location, Ontario. Locally known as The Guild, this abandoned place was once an impressive hotel in Scarborough, Toronto. Since 1914, the property has switched owners many times. At one point, it was even used as a foreign mission house for the Roman Catholic Church. What's more impressive than the buildings is the 90 acres around them. The families that owned the property combined many different architectural styles to create gardens that could rival any property in Europe. For a long time, everything on the property was abandoned. Nowadays, the gardens serve as a great spot for intimate weddings, and there have been major talks about reviving the hotel too. Number 7. The Stanley Park Zoo. Location, British Columbia. This location's history dates all the way back to 1888, when the Stanley Park officially opened in Vancouver, BC. The story goes that a bear was caught and chained to a stump. More and more animals were put on display, and eventually a zoo was erected. The zoo operated until 1996 when it had to shut down due to money issues. The most memorable part of the Stanley Park Zoo has to be the polar bear exhibit. And it's also the only part that still stands strong today. Stanley Park is definitely worth a visit if you're in the area. There's a lot of natural beauty and little spots that are tucked away waiting for you to find them. Number 6. Val Jalbert. Location, Quebec. Val Jalbert is located in Quebec and it is listed as a ghost town. It's easy to see why with photos like this one. The village sprung to existence because of the successful pulp mill in the area. The village was founded in 1901 and by 1929, all the homes in the area were boarded up and everybody was ordered to leave. In the 1960s, the location was transformed into a public park. Yay! Number 5. The Salanese Plant. Location, Alberta. Nowadays, the location is known as AT Plastics, and I'm not sure exactly what happened here. Not too much information I can find online, so if there are any local Edmonton viewers that would like to share some more info, it would be great. An article from 2001 says the plant was shut down in 2002, but an article from 2011 claims the plant shut down in 2006. The location spanned 234 hectares and employed around 1,100 people. The pictures show the plant as it looked like in 2011. The control room still had a lot of PCs just left to rot. And for the most part, the plant gave out an eerie vibe. Number 4. Grain Elevators. Location, Alberta. This is not just one site. The countryside of Alberta seems to be littered with abandoned grain elevators like this one in Harrington, a very small town near Calgary, or this one in Brant. Grain elevators commonly refer to buildings that store grain, but they can also refer to what we see in these pictures, towers containing bucket elevators that load up containers with grain. Locals have tried to preserve as much as they can and have even started the Alberta Grain Elevator Society. Number 3. Camp 30. Location, Ontario. Officially known as the Bowmanville POW Camp, Camp 30 was a prisoner of war camp for German soldiers during World War II. 
The farmer who donated his farmland to the government wanted the place to be a school for unadjusted boys who were not inherently delinquent. And the government actually followed through and built the Bowmanville Boys Training School. That lasted until 1941, when the boys' school was turned into a POW camp. The place had its fair share of troubles, including a revolt in 1942 and a few elaborate escape attempts in 1943. After the war, the camp was turned back into a training school until 1979. After that, the location served many other organizations until 2008, when the camp officially closed its doors. There were many concerns over the preservation of the camp, but nothing major was done. The buildings were vandalized, looted, and partly destroyed. The municipality of Clarington purchased the campsite and have plans to develop homes around some of the historic buildings. It might be weird living next to a building that was part of a prisoner war camp, though. Number 2. Partridge Island. Location, New Brunswick. This island has quite a long history. Located within the city of St. John, the island was first used as a quarantine station in 1785. It also had a lighthouse and a military post on it. During the Irish Potato Famine, it is estimated that around 30,000 people passed through the island for processing, with around 1,200 actually dying there. And by 1890, 78,000 immigrants passed through the island yearly. The most famous part of the island is the Celtic cross dedicated to those who passed on the island. There was a museum near the cross that operated until 1995, but since then, the island has become almost a rite of passage for teenagers in the area. With so much to explore, it's easy to see how you can be attracted to the haunting past of this island. Number 1. The Queen of Sydney. Location, British Columbia. Ah, the famous Queen of Sydney. Seriously though. I did not expect this 7-year-old abandoned fairy to be such a part of popular culture. It has appeared in the TV show The Secret Circle and the Stone Cold Steve Austin movie Damage. The resting place for the Queen of Sydney is the Silverdale Boat Graveyard near Vancouver, BC. The graveyard has become a bit controversial since no one is taking care of it. The government agencies are fighting over who exactly owns the property, and no one wants to drop money on cleaning it up or protecting it for that matter. Oh, hey there. Have you heard about the ghost ship named Lubofirlova? To learn more, you have to check out this video and my channel, World Unearthed.